welcome to our workshop this Sunday. It's great to have you all here. And um, for those of you that haven't met you, uh, <laughs> those of you that haven't met me yet, hello, hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a vocal feminization coach, and I've spent the last three years helping other trans folks to uh, find their voices, really. Um, for me, my voice was a huge source of dysphoria for many a year. It stopped me from transitioning for ages. Um, my voice broke really early on, like it's one of the first voices to break in middle school, and it was super low, like originally. My voice was like right the way down here, um, a little bit lower, actually. <laughs> Starting to lose it. So, you know, I started off with a really low starting point, and I thought, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to get the sound that I want, and that's going to stop me from feeling like myself. But I found that with voice training, the voice is so, so, so flexible. It's capable of more than we know, I think, in nine times out of 10. And I've taught people since then from, you know, age 65 plus, um, who are just starting their transition to people who have been transitioning for a while, um, all of us with unique starting points. But I have found that as long as you don't have any sort of vocal injury, I really do believe that anybody can do this to get a great, great, great feminine voice. Okay. Um, I won't be focusing on trans masculinization or androgenization of the voice today, unfortunately. It's just not my wheelhouse, not my lived experience. But if you are looking for some help with that, Savvy does offer classes on the every other Sunday as well. And we also have classes running on Thursdays and Fridays, I think, with Jess, where you can find help with that as well. So the structure of today, the way it's going to work is that we are going to go through a bit of a brief on safety, on some of the verbiage that we're going to be using as well, some kind of voice theory. And then we're going to have the opportunity for different volunteers to come up on stage for 10 minutes at a time. If you are interested in volunteering today to help to find out where your voice is and how you can move forwards with it, there are a few things that I'd like to ask you to do. Um, in your settings, if you can please make sure that um, when you come up on stage, that your mic activation threshold is all the way down, that you're on push to talk, and that any sort of noise suppression is turned off as well. That's going to mean that we can hear all of your lovely voices that comes through. While in the stands, though, I do politely ask that if you do want to have a conversation, please do take it to the courtyard or elsewhere in the academy and then come back when you're ready, just because it can get pretty loud <laughs> when we're in amongst the stands there as well. So um, throughout today, I'm also going to ask a few different volunteers to make some different sounds with some warm-up exercises. And for that, I'll count you all in. I will also have some Q&As um, throughout the session today as well. So just to get a quick show of hands for everybody who is here for a first time today. I heard some kind of rumblings in the crowd. There are a few people here for the first time. Yep. Cool beans. Awesome. I see a bunch of people who are regulars as well. Perfect. Welcome back, everyone. So um, I know for those of you who have maybe been here before or maybe watching the VODs because these are all recorded and put onto our YouTube channel. Um, only the stage though, so don't worry if you're in the crowd. Um, if you have watched these VODs, you've probably heard the stated talk before, but I just think with so many new people, it's so important that we look after our voices. And, you know, I haven't had anybody have a vocal injury yet and touch wood, I don't want anybody here to be the first. So with that in mind, there are a few different things that we are going to be looking out for. The overarching rule is to listen to your body, okay? If things feel really effortful, if we have to push, or we have to squeeze, or we have to really make a lot of volume um, to make a certain sound, that's no good. We want to be nice and gentle with all of this here. We don't want to force a thing with this, okay? If you find that you have any sort of pain when you're using your voice, maybe when you're practicing, when you're using your voice outside of these lessons, that is also a sign from your body to be like, hey, time out, <laughs> time to stop. So if you do find that you've got any sort of pain, stop for the day, come back to it another day. And if that pain is reoccurring, it might be something that you're doing that isn't great. It might be that we are pushing too high a pitch or too heavy a vocal weight. It might be that your resonance technique is causing some other muscles to tense up and give you a very gritty sound. Um, whatever it is, it's a warning sign that we must heed, okay? And if you are finding that this pain is reoccurrent, it's a great idea to stop practice and to have a chat with me or Savvy or Jess at the Academy as well or any other voice practitioner that can help you out with this stuff here. There are some other things that can really help as well. Um, for every 50 minutes of voice use, we should be getting around about 10 minutes of vocal rest. And when we're aiming to get our voice to where we want it to be, one really nice way that I like to think about it is that we want to get to a point where we can talk for an hour with maybe then a little bit of a rest. Most of our conversations are not an hour long with people. The vast majority of them are a lot shorter and snippier. So if we can go for an hour, we can likely use our voice for the whole day. The voice when we start off, it will feel a little bit like 
an impression. It might feel like something that isn't quite representative of you yet, but it's one of these things where the more that you live in it, the more that you spend time within your voice, interacting with people, and VRC is a great place to do this, um, the more that it'll feel like you. The more that you live in it, the more life you breathe into it and the more automatic it all becomes. As well, if you find that throughout this process, you've got any unintended change to the way that your voice feels or how it functions, stop what you're doing and let someone know. So some things that can be included here, um, if you find that your voice is like really hoarse, no good. If you find that your voice is kind of weak and shaky, no good. If you find that your voice is like continuously cracking all of a sudden when it didn't before, also not a good sign. If you find that it's got a certain grittiness to it it didn't have before, again, could be a warning sign. If you can't get as high or as low as you used to be able to, or as loud or as quiet, all of these could be little bits of info to say, hey, something isn't right and you should pause and reevaluate what's happening. So don't force anything, take your time with it and know that this is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. The average time that some of my um, private students one-on-one -on -one take to get to their goals is normally anywhere between six and 12 lessons spaced over like eight to, I don't know, like 12, 14 weeks. <laughs> it all depends. Um, and a lot of people's journeys are different. Everyone's journeys are different. You know, I found that once I got my voice kind of started and off the ground to the point in which I was getting like a she hair um, more often than not in VR chat, like my voice has changed so much since then, just from living in it um, day in and day out. And you'll all find the same thing, even when we think, yeah, this is pretty good. There are still some new things that your body will adjust and grow into as well. While we're on the topic of safety, I want to talk about exercises and a common misconception that I hear a lot as well. Vocal exercises are mostly to do with agility and balance and finding new configurations that already exist within our voices, you know? So it's much more like doing gymnastics training and like learning to walk across a balance beam than it is about going to the vocal gym of vocal gains and doing like a gajillion vocal curls, right? <laughs> it's not to get like big muscles in the throat. It's about finding dexterity and balance and different configurations to get different sounds. Again, for some of us, we might not be able to get right the way up to the range that different volunteers demonstrate today, and that's totally normal. I found that some students present to me with a um, difficulty getting past a D sharp three or an E3 in practice, and with time and with energy in practice, we can get past that. But if you find that at the moment it's just too tricky, again, don't force it, don't push it. All right. Some things that can help if you're on spiral lactone, be careful with your hydration. Make sure you stay nice and hydrated and that you get hydrated about an hour before the start of any sort of practice session, because it does take some time for that to reach our vocal folds. Um, try and knock the smoking and vaping on the head if you can. It's not great for us. And um, alcohol use as well. If you are feeling a little bit rough after using alcohol or anything else, it's a good idea not to practice until you're feeling right as rain again. Okie doke. Some things that can also help too, if you've got some nice hot tea, that can be really, really helpful. Um, I've got some like honey and lemon tea with me at the minute. It's a lifesaver. <laughs> it's great. So that can really help you too. As well, know that morning voice is a thing. Um, I've had plenty of students roll out of bed and be like, okay, it's time to train. And then it's like, oh no, <laughs> we can't do the thing. When we go to bed at night, our vocal folds, they tuck themselves away. They get covered in a layer of protective mucus and that really coats them and stops them from behaving normally. So it will take some time to warm up and get into our voice before practice. And I would recommend leaving it about an hour after you wake up. So with all that said and done, with regards to safety, if anyone has any concerns, please do feel free to tag me in the Discord and we'll take a look. But I'd love to ask if anybody has any safety questions specifically. I'm gonna start from this side. If you can raise your hand or jump up and down if you're on desktop, that would be awesome. Nope, everyone's looking pretty chill. Yes, hello, Lilith. What's your question? Oh, I can't seem to hear you, Lilith. Sorry, did you have a question? Nope, maybe not. I'm going to move on. Come back to me, though. Wave your hand again if you've got a question. Hi, A E I O U. I think that's how I say it, or A U. <laughs> What's your question? Um. Besides uh, morning voice and, you know, not mm -hmm. smoking on the head and such, is there any other things that we could look out for? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. Sorry. 
It's okay. Yeah, I mean, the main thing is just listening to your body, you know. Um, I will say that at the start, the voice will be inefficient, you know. Um, I can hold a note for about 25 seconds. And at the start, I could not. It's not because I've got a big lung capacity. I smoked for years, you know, and I've not done a lot of exercise. My lung capacity is not great. You know, I had asthma as well. But um, because of the efficiency of my voice these days, I'm able to sustain notes for longer. Um, what we're looking for is relaxation, efficiency, and a feeling of comfort. Often when we get that, it's a sign that we are doing things right, you know? So as well as the negatives of looking out for those warning signs we talked about, look for relaxation, look for ease, and that can often be the, um, the answer to getting some better skills in this zone. So yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Lilith, did you have a question, yes or no? Oh, great. Hi, Lilith. What was your question? Maybe not. Sorry, I'm going to move on. If you've got a question, do pop it in the Discord and we'll get back to you. And as well, if there are any questions on the Discord and Twitch, please do pop them in and we'll come back at certain points throughout today to be able to answer those. Now, I do see Sammy in the back with a question. Hello, what's your safety question, please? I was wondering, this sounds silly, but does, does eating impact voice training? Let's say if you like, eat a lot and you go, like, you're like really mm -hmm. full, that like impacts like, your voice training? Yeah, so the question there was, can eating impact voice training? It can. Um, spicy foods can. Um, if you suffer from acid reflux, that's a factor. If you have foods that don't agree with acid reflux, that can cause some problems. Um, if not, you should be okay. Um, some things that can kind of clog up your system as well, dairy, cheese, milk, yogurt, that can kind of increase mucus production and make things a little bit trickier. But if you just stuff to the guts and like, you know, you've had a big meal, that's fine. <laughs> you should still be able to practice. That should be no problem. But if you've got acid reflux or any specific dietary problems or allergy problems, I'd be, that's what I'd be looking at. If I was out of that, nah, you should be fine. Great. Any other questions here for safety before we move on? Hello, Lakota. Hello. What's your question? So um, how would you deal with uh, your uh, morning voice uh, you know, being uh, perfectly fine uh, for uh, uh, doing a feminine voice, but it slowly gets worse over the course of the day? Hmm. Okay. Morning voice should be one of these things where it gets worse at the start and then gets easier. If you find that you're having difficulty using your voice throughout the course of the day, I reckon that's a good sign that, that might be vocal fatigue. It might be that we have to get back to basics with some things with SOVTEs and sound production and balancing what's happening with our pitch, weight and airflow as well to get something that's more efficient. Um, if it is getting worse throughout the day, it's probably going to be that more than morning voice. But we can take a look at that specific case as well. I mean, it all depends on really what's happening there. Um, any other questions from this side, just to double check? I don't think so. Um, nope. Okay, cool. We will move on. So let's talk a little bit about some of the main things that we are changing here with voice. There are some main things to look at. There are some other variables as well, of course, but these are the main bits of language and verbiage that we're going to be using to explore voice. Um, I'd love to take some answers from the crowd. If you could raise your hand, if you know one of these big three variables that we are looking to change here in voice. Does anybody have an answer for me? No, nope, we're a bit shy today. Yes, Audrey, hello. Thank you for being brave. What's one of the big ones? Resonance. Absolutely, resonance is a huge one. So resonance, um, also called size, um, it's all about the size and shape of our vocal tract. Okie doke. I would say that you shouldn't start focusing on this until you're able to get up to around about a G3 sustainably without a lot of strain and pushing. If you can talk at a G3 for around about, I don't know, 10 minutes, that's a good sign that you're ready for this stuff. But if not, I would save some of this stuff here for later. What we basically have with resonance is this stuff here. So this is the power source filter model. It's the conceptual model for how the voice functions. The story starts off with the power, all about our breath from the diaphragm, coming up to the sound source in the throat, and then the filter is where the magic happens for resonance. Okie doke. So when someone's exposed to tea, a few different things happen. The vocal folds will get longer and heavier, meaning that our pitch and our vocal weight are going to go down and increase respectively. But outside of that, we also have a bit of a broadening of this space here, this R1 space here. This will get a little bit longer and a little bit wider. 
And the funny thing about sound is that it takes on the characteristics of the environment it finds itself in. So like if I grab this cup, for example, and if I talk into the cup, you can all hear that the sound changes. The same is true for this space here. The bigger the space, the darker the sound, and the smaller the space, the brighter the sound. There are a bunch of different exercises that we can use to be able to go into this. If you're curious about those, take a look at VODs 2 and 3 on our channel there. The way that it sounds, though, is if I keep my pitch the same, Hello, this is a very dark resonance, a very big space, and as we make it smaller, hello, 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 we can hear a huge brightening effect of that sound. Um, really powerful stuff, resonance is a big one. Does anybody know another thing that we are going to be taking a look at today? And again, do you raise your hand, yes, oh, a few more volunteers, now cow, hello, what's another thing that we're looking at today? Whether it's like Bressy or Bressy? Is what? Sorry, I didn't quite catch you there. Sorry, can you repeat that for me? Like very breathy or like pressy? Yeah, breathiness and the pressness of the voice is definitely going to be a variable, but it's not what I'm looking for. It's definitely a factor, and I think that it's one that is often overlooked. Um, if we have a lot of early kitchen in the voice, it's going to be kind of hard to use. It's going to be inefficient. We're going to be running out of breath all the time, and it's going to dry us out. If our voice is like really overpressed, <laughs> it's not going to be great. Again, difficult to produce. Um, not the best. We find those edge cases coming in when we try and achieve new different vocal positions. But as one of the big things that we're looking for feminization, I'm not quite looking for that, but I'm glad you brought it up. Does anybody else know another one of these two things? I'm looking for something beginning with a P and something beginning with a W. Claire Cat, hello. What's your answer? Uh, pitch. Pitch, absolutely spot on. Ding, 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 ding. So pitch all about how high or how low the voice is. I know that there's a narrative at the minute that, you know, this is the least important thing. And I think that a lot of people neglect it as a result. But I would really posit that pitch is super, super integral to all of this with voice work. Pitch, how high or low we go, is measured either in hertz, the number of vibrations per second that our vocal folds do, or in musical notes. If you're not too familiar with it, though, I recommend the Voice Tools app. Super good for being able to generate different pitches, like, ready there for you. They're really, really good for that. So the thing about pitch is that while we can have, you know, some great voices that are coming in quite a bit lower and can sound really femme, really awesome, the lower that we go, the harder it can be, and the more that we have to adjust for our resonance and our weight to get a fantastic sound. I think as well that if we have problems with pitch production and we aren't able to make, let's say, a B3 um, in our voice very easily, it'll sound like this. Uh, if we aren't able to achieve that note very easily, we might find that we are pushing and squeezing and doing a lot to compensate for the pitch work that we haven't done. So I think that by really focusing on your pitch and being able to get right the way up to a C4 in your main speaking voice, your M1 voice, that's really helpful for providing the skeleton on which we're going to make the rest of our voices. Average pitches can be anywhere between like 150 hertz, 170 hertz, 210. I've had one student that averaged at like 240, but I could not. <laughs> it's my vocal folds. I'm not going to sit there comfortably. So lots of variance there. As we start to go below 130 hertz, this is where we start to have to like back off on some of the sounds to make them sound good. So all good things to think about. Really, really good. Pitch is a huge one. And there's one more that I'm missing. Does anybody know what that final one is? Tree Walker, hello. What's your answer? Is it vocal weight? Absolutely. Vocal weight, 100%. All about the amount of umph and drive within the voice here. Um, there's a bit of a ritual I like to do. A really good way that we can find vocal weight is to imagine a really cute animal. It is adorable. I like to imagine a cat person. I'm a cat person. Um, but I want you all to imagine this cute little creature. On the count of three, I want you all to give me a really nice, really soft. Ah. Now, that's not to say um, that it's going to be super breathy, like, ah. But we do want it to be nice and soft. Ah. All right, here we go. On the count of three. Three, two, one. All together, everyone. Ah. Please. Beautiful. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Absolutely. This is a really, really good skill. And this is where we want most of our voice to be. Now, this is going to be dynamic. If you want to be like 
hey, yeah, no, and be authoritative, um, authoritative, we will increase the vocal weight. Um, if you want to yell and be like, hey, yo, we are going to increase the vocal weight. It's not going to be static. But when we have a voice based in testosterone, you know, our old voices. If we're going down here, um, this low voice needs a heavy vocal weight, R-E-A-O-U, to be able to work. Um, if I try and use this voice with the same vocal weight that I would normally use, it becomes very difficult to produce sound. So at higher pitches, it's going to be better for us to be able to use a light vocal weight. If we think about this and how the vocal folds are coming together, a light vocal weight is where these vocal folds are very softly touching, and a heavy vocal weight, we'll explore in a second, is when they're really coming off of one another. With a, um, a higher pitch, the vocal folds are going to be faster. So a high pitch and a heavy vocal weight is a good recipe for vocal fatigue and for a voice that is not very efficient, not one that you can trust and use for a long period of time. So vocal weight is really, really useful. It also really helps us with our transitions between our different registers, being able to go, ah, without there having a big, ah, crack in the middle. <laughs> so let's explore that heavy vocal weight together. I want you all to imagine that really cute creature once more in your hands. It is adorable. But I want you all on the count of three to give me a really nice, Ah, imagining that it's just thrown up all over you. It's gross. It's terrible. Here we go. On the count of three, very buzzy. Three, two, one, and ah, please. Ah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Very, very, very good. So if you find that in your own vocal journeys that your voice is kind of, you know, it's definitely higher, it's definitely brighter, there's a lot less chest in it, but it's sounding kind of buzzy, right? And if any of us are feeling here, this is likely where vocal weight is going to come in to be able to round everything out and have it be really nice and soft. Okie doke. So there's the big three. And with regards to the journey that we are all taking with voice, everyone's going to be at different stages. We have people just learning about these things initially, being able to explore them, being able to develop their range. Awesome. Then when we're able to get to like a B3 in our M1 pretty easily, when we are able to control our resonance independent of our pitch and do all of this with a nice light vocal weight, we're ready for stage two when we are going to be putting it all together. And uh, hello, one, two, three, trying to keep this voice. It's going to take a lot of focus and it might well fall off at the end. Totally fine. We then enter our third stage once we have that a little bit more consistent, which is all about living in the voice, refining it, exploring new options, and having it sound really like you. So with all that said and done, that's a lot of the theory. I want to have a quick question uh, and answer period just to see if anyone's got any questions on these fundamentals before we go to our first volunteer. Anybody have any questions on what these things mean? Pitch resonance and wet or you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, I think we're all looking pretty good. Are there any questions online as well, can I please ask? No, I think we're looking good. If that changes, do let me know. Cool. By the way, who's taking the online questions today? Is it you, Wumbi? Or who am I, who am I looking at? <laughs> yes? Cool. Okie doke. If anyone come up, do let me know. Awesome. So moving swiftly on, we're going to have our first volunteer up on stage. Again, please do make sure that your mic settings are all set up and ready. Um, but if you could please raise your hands if you would like to come up on stage and get a little bit of feedback and see how we can move forwards, please. That would be awesome. Yep. And oh, yeah, I see that stretching there. It's Reva. <laughs> come on, then. Let's have you up. Oh, Jesse, is Jesse volunteering? Do did, did, did they want to come up? No, I don't think they want to. Never mind. We're going to get one more. Let's see who's close. Anybody else from this side? Slizer, hello. I saw you just like raise up your hand there. If everyone could give Slizer a big old round of applause and if you'd like to make your way to the stage, please. Woo! Mm -hmm. All righty. Let me just go on ahead and start this timer real quick. All right, Sliza, so our time starts now. So hello, hi, how are you doing? How are you feeling with voice stuff? How are things been? Hi, um, I've been uh, practicing voice stuff for about two and a half months now. And I'm doing pretty okay, but feeling kind of stuck yeah. where I am right now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I volunteered. 
totally love it, love it, love it. Your picture's in a great place. Um, I'm looking at it through my spectrogram here. It's just like a fancy pitch analyzer. And a lot of it's sitting at like this 190 place. Really, really, really awesome place to be. I can tell that you've worked on your resonance as well. It definitely sounds brighter. The main thing that's popping out to me is vocal weight at the minute. It's just that things are sounding a little bit heavy in places. And I think that we could benefit with just a global softening and see how you fare with that. Um, does that marry up with your own self-perception of how your voice has been progressing? Yeah, kind of. Like I'm noticing there's a bit too much still there and I want to kind of soften it mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, that's where I am as well. I do feel that on some words as well, soften it a little bit. We're getting a little bit darker as your pitch comes down. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the resonance, it is definitely brighter than baseline, but I feel like we could do with some more consistency and just softening the whole thing out, I think would be like a really, really awesome place to start. Um, cool. Okay. Hey, let's do this. So I'm going to put some words on the screen here. And um, what I want to do is to get into a place which is really nice and soft. Um, I really love to use SOVTEs to be able to reconfigure our voice in terms of pitch and vocal weight. And they're so, so linked. And I think that's a really good way to get like a nice solid foundation. Um, have you ever tried any SOVTEs before, Slicer? Um, I think so. Uh, the the mm. raindrops one, I think. Okay, it's going to be something a little bit different. What I want you to do for me, um, this is a little bit of a funny thing to do, but, and you can all practice off mic as well. I'd love it if you did. I want you to go ahead and push your lips out for me. I want you to wet them a little bit. And I just want you to blow a steady stream of air, making kind of like a horse noise, kind of like a... Can you try that for me? Yeah. Perfect. Now, Sliza, can you make sure that your noise um, cancelling is off, please? If you just make sure that you've got any sort of noise expression turned off for me, please, that'd be awesome. Noise cancelling. Yeah, it should be in the off. little menu. Yep. Good. Now, okay, yeah. let's do that one more time. Perfect. When you're ready. Excellent. Now, we're going to do that again. And we're going to start to get a really nice soft hum going. It can be anywhere you like. Um, something around about here. Can you try that for me? Yeah. Awesome. Let's move that around. Can you give me like a... Awesome. We're going to do something a bit different this next one. We are going to start with a heavy vocal weight with that sound, and we are going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Have a listen to this. Can you give that a go for me? That's as far as it can go. Yeah. Ran out of uh -huh, air. No problem. <laughs> awesome. Now, let's try going the other way. I want to start very soft, and then we're going to get heavier. Have a listen to this. Okay, can you give that a go? Hmm, cool, cool, cool. Now what I want to do is go straight to this note here, and we're going to just try and maintain it on a really nice, soft sound. And he gave me one of these, it's going to be... You can hear that the voice is just going at the background. Nice and soft. That note again is right there. Can you try that for me, please, Liza? Good. One more time, even softer. Let the breath do the driving. The vocal folds are just coming together and happen to make sound. Good. Okay. We're going to do that again. And this time, we're going to open our mouths and just have a nice soft air come out at the end. We're going to go. Can you try that for me? Good. I felt that as you maintain that note, it started softer and went, uh, and got a little bit heavier. Try and keep it soft, soft, soft. We're trying to keep the activity of the voice exactly the same as it was in our sound, as it is in our air. 
Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Um, no, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. If I can get a big old round of applause for Sliza, please. Woo! <laughs> Great work. <laughs> Awesome. So I really like that, um, especially having that, you know, this situation as our first volunteer. She did really well. Um, but it ties in really nicely to someone's question at the start. Um, when we're talking about pitch, it, it's really, although yes, it is one of these things where we can talk dynamically at a bunch of different ranges and we don't have to go up there. If we are going up there and we want to have more of a dynamic voice where we can get excited, we can sound like upset, you know, different things, different variations on our baseline voice paying attention to what is happening with the relationship of our pitch and vocal weight is really, really, really good to do. Remember that both vocal weight and our pitch, both of these happening, oh my God, both of these are happening, I can't talk today, in the sound source. They are intrinsically linked. Although we conceptualize these things as different metrics to pull apart and start to listen for in the voice, um, I think it's important to also know the mechanic linkage between these two different mechanisms here. If we are finding that whenever we go up high, we have to push, we have to get heavier, that's a really good opportunity to learn to have a voice that is more uniform across the spectrum. One of the things I talk about with my one-on-one -on -one students is that we do have absolutely these um, areas of pitch, resonance, and vocal weight, which we want to get consistent, right? Um, we want to get them really sounding good. But we also have this kind of comfortability of the voice. Even if our pitch, resonance, and vocal weight are, on the most part, pretty good, if it sounds uncomfortable to use our voice, or indeed that we are showing signs of changing behaviors, like increasing vocal weight as we change pitch or maybe as our pitch comes down our resonance drops what this does is it erodes the impression to a listener that this is because of our anatomy we are behaviorally modifying our anatomy to be to a new standard by having that be really nice and comfy sounding and really nice and consistent a listener will think that oh her voice has always been that way of course it has you know it sounds so consistent if it sounds like it's moving it's more dynamic and we don't have quite as much of a control of consistency this is where we might not get as many she hers as we'd want to so really really good option to look at and this is especially relevant as we enter that third stage as we look at the little idiosyncrasies and little things that we can change within our own voices but great i'd love to ask if anybody has any questions on the back of this here and what we were talking about um i'm going to start from this side and come along to the left if anyone's got any questions on anything we just did and at the back i see someone come forward i can't see you <laughs> 20 kdc hello what's your question um, what I was wondering is, is there a standard library of reference points for the different axes? Yeah, sure. So we don't have this currently on our server. I would love to look into doing that. Um, but there are definitely reference points of these different intersections of weight and pitch and weight and resonance, etc. Um, Online Vocal Coach is a really, really good Discord server. Um, Excellent, excellent, excellent server, excellent learning place as well. Um, that can be a really good option. There's a big old um, repository of different samples there, I think, that Celine has prepared. Um, I think as well, if you look up Celine on the Trans Voice subreddit, it's S-E-L-E-N-E, -E -E, or Online Vocal Coach, OVC, you should be able to navigate towards that, and there are some great resources. Um, outside of that, of course, um, Ziana from Trans Voice Lessons has demonstrated these different axes um, on her videos as well. Great different reference points to look at. But yeah, we are looking at something internally. Thanks for your question. Um, any other questions from this side? Thank you so much. I thought I saw someone, or well, maybe I'm wrong. Nope, okay, I'm gonna move on over. Any other questions? Nope, I think we are golden about a flower. Hello, what's your question? Hi, um, can you damage your voice by using too much vocal weight? What, sorry, was the question, can you damage your voice from using too much vocal weight? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I would say that there's definitely an increased risk. Um, with anything voice related, we are looking to have a nice, efficient system. Um, 
if we are pushing heavily with our vocal weight, what's likely is that we're going to experience vocal fatigue faster. Um, our vocal folds, again, they are rubbing together. Let's put them on screen, actually. Again, just as a content warning, this is a bit gross, <laughs> but this is what the vocal folds look like when they are doing their little dance. And they are coming together anywhere between 80 to 1,000 times a second, super duper fast. If we are doing that with a great deal of force or a great deal of vocal weight, it's going to wear them down quicker. Um, just as if you were clapping your hands, you know, if you were to do that a thousand times a second, it'd feel pretty rough. <laughs> and the same is true for the vocal folds. So, yeah, um, I would say definitely be on the lookout for it. Try and get softer overall. That really should help to reduce that vocal fatigue. Um, plowing ahead with vocal fatigue when your voice is really tired it's like oh my god i've had such a workout don't make me talk again that's when we might start to increase the risk of injury so do be careful great question um any other questions around this side or online can i ask as well nope i don't think we've got any any I, questions I online, question online awesome uh, oh my gosh house is like screwed up anyways chaotic duck asks i have asthma and a speech impediment and i was wondering if that would affect my voice training in any way mm -hmm. it definitely depends on the um speech impediment and, and it depends on how active your asthma is as well um i'd say try and find treatment for the asthma you know regulate your symptoms if you're finding that things are hard and you're like struggling to get air um, a femme voice will use a greater volume of air than our traditional, you know, our older voice would use. Um, so if you find that you're kind of short of breath anyway, it's likely to have an impact. Um, so do try and treat your systems, uh, systems, symptoms. Oh my God, I can't talk. Symptoms as best as you can. Um, I think that's a really good shout. With regards to speech impediments, it really does depend on the speech impediment itself as to how much it will impact. Um, with different speech impediments it's all different areas of of the system here but speech impediments are largely to do with vowel formation constant formation and resonance um i think it's good to know what your kryptonite is if it's r's turning into w's if it's trouble with s's um try and practice around those as much as you can and um yeah just bear in mind within your journey it's really difficult to tell without knowing the individual case but both of these things will play a factor best to be aware of them and try and play your strengths as best as you can um any other questions one be online oh, that's all the questions that for now awesome great well let's segue into our next volunteer um if anybody would like to volunteer i'm going to take someone from this side of the room yep and violet sammy i can see you just like bouncing up and down <laughs> Right away, let's get you on stage. You can have a big old round of applause, please. Woo! Mm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me just go ahead and start this timer here, and I'll have a little sip of tea while I'm at it. Mm. All righty. So, hi, Violet. Welcome, welcome. Do you prefer Violet or Sammy, by the way? Which one's first? Sammy. I prefer Sammy. Sammy. Perfect, Sammy. Awesome. How are things been? Tell me all about it. Well, I've been told by a lot of people that I have like a really feminine sounding voice. Like, I don't say, but like people said, oh, like, I thought you were like actually cis or I don't know, you were trans. Yeah. Like online, not like real life, but like online. People have been like mm. complimenting my voice. I would agree with that. You're sounding great. <laughs> You're sounding really, really good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what brings you here today? Well, I find like in the morning, I struggle with like achieving the voice I want, like the pitch I want. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sometimes I get up too late and I'm like rushing around and then I go to like my lecture and then I just find out that I don't want to speak because I don't like the sound of my voice. Mm -hmm yeah totally totally hear you there um cool weird question i know but do you shower in the morning or in the night typically sammy um i prefer to shower in the night like before cool 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 if you were to change that around that can be really really helpful for you being able to just exit the door in the morning with your voice in place um the big thing about morning voice is that there's no way around it. We either need to warm up or just give ourselves time to be able to get there. Um, by moving your shower time from evening into the morning, you carve out a space where you're going to be able to practice while you're doing other stuff. 
And not only that, but you're going to be able to warm up in a hot, humid environment that's going to be really, really good for your vocal folds. Um, a lot of professional singers will use like a, a nebulizer to like inhale warm, steamy air. Um, that can be really good, but they're expensive and they're a hell of a contraption <laughs> to use in the morning. So the shower is the next best thing. And um, what I like to do, I do this like pretty much every morning, is I'll start off with some long, sustained, low notes. Um, Dysphoria allowing, of course, but it'll sound like I'm summoning the devil most mornings. I'll you know be in the shower and it'll be like, and I'll move around, holding down a note, changing vowel, just kind of like getting used to it. And those low, slow, big oscillations of the vocal folds, they help to get blood flow going, they help to bring nutrients and water to the vocal folds. And it also helps to get rid of this kind of mucus that comes over and, um, prevents us from sounding great. So shower in the morning, long sustained low notes, both really, really good. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about your warm up? Do you warm up generally? Or are you just like diving on in into your days typically? Yeah, just diving on in really. Like I kind of forget to like, sometimes I will practice, like I try and like mm -hmm. lower pitch, high pitch, like the some other days I'll forget. Yeah, yeah. Well, the place that you've landed on is like fantastic. You're sounding absolutely sick. It's just more about having that um, that little bit of time away. And if you can make it a ritual, it makes it way, way, way easier. It's why I like to tie it in with the shower. It's just like most people, if I'm going to ask them, OK, after you wake up, sit in front of your computer with a pitch tracker or with a straw water and do this whole thing. It just doesn't get done. <laughs> people are busy. You're rushing out the door. You've got lectures, all sorts of stuff. No good. If you move the shower there, it's going to happen anyway. And it's a really, really good opportunity to do this. Um, some other things that I'd recommend, the lip trills can be really, really good for warming up. I also do a bunch of those. Um, also, I take a look at managing your break between your M1 and M2, just like gliding up and down. Ah. Often, if our voice isn't warmed up, this is going to be one of the harder kind of movements that we can do. And I use this as something of like a litmus test to see if I'm ready for the day. Because if I'm going like, ah, and I'm trying and it's just not happening, then I might need a little bit more warming up. I need a little bit more time with these low sustained notes or just something a little bit under that range. Um, so that can be a really good test. And the benefit with this as well, Sammy, is that like if you warm up, you're going to stop yourself from getting into bad habits of like pushing to get these highs. You're going to feel like you've got more confidence overall. And I think that that moment of intention at the start of your day setting your expectations and going for it it can really do a lot for our mental health and it can make it so that we don't feel nearly as vulnerable in our voice you know um it's one thing using a voice online where we can log off <laughs> at any point right it's another thing when you're in a lecture theater and there are 90 to you know 200 of your peers with you in the room right and what I don't want to see is for people to have their voice controlling them and for you to feel like you have to change your life, or your lifestyle decisions and how, you know, visible a person you are because of the voice. I think that, you know, warm up, go for that. That can really help. Um, some other things as well, I would say, again, you are sounding fantastic. I completely agree with that. Um, but what I would look to do is also maybe take a look at making some phone calls with people, you know, um, just for your own self to see, okay, if I call 10 different people, do I get 10 she has? And if that is the case, we can start to do that IRL as well. You know, we can start to do that drive through so like just that Costa, whatever it is. Um, and that can really, really help. I think that dysphoria can paint such a negative picture of how we're sounding compared to like how it actually is. Um, so yeah, any questions on the back of that feedback, Sammy, or anything else that I can help you with today? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Thank you. That, that's going to help cool. a lot. <laughs> Perfect. You're doing <laughs> great. I think as well. That's just one of the main Thank things I want to say. Yeah, absolutely killing it. Keep killing it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. If I get a big <laughs> round of applause for Sammy, please. Woo. <laughs> great work. Awesome. Awesome. 
Now, with an eye on the time, um, I'd like to move on into just a general Q&A, opening up to anybody here who's got any sort of voice questions. I'd love to be able to help. We've got 10 minutes on the clock. I'd love to start off with the online questions. If there are any more online questions, please do type them in now. Um, that would be brill. Is there anything there already, Wombi? Yeah, for sure. So the question there was, um, how important are speaking patterns and intonation and inflection in getting the gender that you want? I would say that it's a big help. I think that it's a big boost. And I think that the question should more be around what makes you feel like you rather than gender with inflection. So if we think about people who are in um, high stress jobs or high prestige jobs, things like you know politicians, lawyers, doctors, um, cis women will often really mute their feminine inflection to be able to fit into a workplace that is very male dominated, right? Um, in a lot of spaces, subconsciously, studies have shown that feminine inflection and speaking patterns um, can be seen as unprofessional, which is stupid, <laughs> I know. But nevertheless, these people who do talk in a much more flat, declarative manner still get a she, her on the phone, okay? Um, you can really use any sort of inflection that you like. And especially if it feels more in tune with you to kind of come across as like a little bit butcher or like kind of if you want to flag that you're like, you know, a woman attracted to women as well. This can also really help you to be able to get the vibe that you want. So, yeah, I'd say it's a great boost if you're looking for it. Um, but if you don't want to do it, it's, I think, the most optional thing with regards to vocal feminization, you know. Um, yeah. So great question. Not mega important, but can be a lovely boost. Any other questions online, please? No? Cool, cool, cool. No worries. Well, I'm going to start off some questions on this side. So just any questions you've got, throw them at me, please. If you can raise your hands, that would be awesome. And AEIOU, -E -E, I've seen you for a while. Hello. What's your question? Is there anything you'd suggest to just absolute beginners? <laughs> Yeah, so for absolute, absolute beginners, experiment. Try different stuff on. I would say a big thing is to enter the mindset that your voice can do more than you currently think is possible and that you need to get comfortable with making weird noises, making silly noises. I think yeah. just trying out different things and exploring this toolkit that we have within the voice is a really, really great first step. I've had plenty of students that when they start off these lessons, I've heard them in speech be able to make pitches at like 250, 280, whatever. But then when I ask them to do that, it's just like, we're locked in. Um, um, you know, the circuit says, this happens this way, therefore this sound comes out. So be free to experiment. Oh God, that's the timer from the last one. <laughs> there we go. Be free to experiment. Try doing stupid impressions. Um, try singing, you know, try singing out some different songs that you like that are in different ranges. See how that feels for you. Um, and then once you feel like you've kind of had a bit of a play about and you felt what your voice can do, there's a bit of a checklist of things that we want to be able to do. So I think it's very beneficial for you to be able to hold a note at a G3 for 10 seconds with it not being super shaky or cracking or being ethical. That's really helpful. Um, I would say that being able to pitch match is a huge thing too. If you can hit a note, play a note and then hit it exactly, it's a massive help for you being able to map out your voice. Um, I would also say that you should take a look at resonance, start to play around with it, explore it, because resonance and the skills required behind really manipulating it well do take time, you know, so explore, try out some of these different whisper exercises, try out some of these different things, and just see how it all kind of comes together. I would say don't get hung up, it's a really big thing, don't get hung up on, is my voice passing, is my voice, you know, going to get a she, her, is it a he, her, where am I, you know? Focus more on your vocal capabilities and the different options that you can experience. And I think that's going to be a really, really good place to start. But thank you so much for your question. Um, any other questions around here, please? Yes, Ari Dub. Hello. What's your question? So is there any suggestions on getting past like dead octaves? I When I'm practicing, I have a tendency to find that where I would see my my preferred voice is in an octave range mm. that ends up getting jumped and going straight into like an uncomfortable head voice and then just below mm. it is pretty much it sounds forced but it's 
it's hard to explain it, but it if you can understand what I'm trying to ask about Game Pass a dead octave yeah. or bringing that octave back out. Yeah, okay. So for all the listeners as well, an octave is a range of pitches, right? Between like one C to another. So it's where the note kind of starts to repeat itself. So if I start here, that's that span there. Uh, that's like an octave, right? It's a span of different notes. Um, when you say that you've got a dead octave, is it like between a specific pitch range or is it just as you approach kind of like a certain note that things start to get difficult for you? I, I don't know what actual range it is, like yeah. theory wise. In music, I was always bad about it, but it's no problem. If I, no problem. If I go up uh. and down the scale, I will hit one point and it just stops and then jumps to a whole new octave. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. So, what I think you're describing there is a big change in register that as you're going up, uh, and it just kind of boom, pop. Exactly. Yep, yeah, that's it. Cool. Exactly, cool. So we have different registers in the voice, which are different mechanisms by which our vocal folds vibrate. And the thing that really helps you to be able to navigate those ranges is having a great amount of breath support and also thinning out the voice, getting it nice and soft and vocal weight. So if I'm going to go to this, like, high up here, uh, I want to soften out. Uh, and there wasn't a crack. If I get really heavy, uh, there is a crack indeed. So what I think you should do is try installing voice tools, try going through your range, see what you can um, produce with a variety of different SOVTEs, things like mm, mm, see if there's a range where you are like really comfy and where things start to fall apart, okay? When you approach the bit where things start to fall apart, it might be something like this, for example. Great, okay, it's just flipping without our consent. What I would do is I'd look at the note below it, or two notes below it, and get that, instead of it being like shaky, like, uh, or hard to do, uh, we wanted to get that really nice and stable. By working under the point at which our control starts to leave us and we start to involuntarily break into a new register, that's where we start to get the gains of the ceiling, right? We don't get a really good vocal range by just working at our absolute hardest point, go a few steps below, get that really nice and stable, be able to comfortably talk in it for a period of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, explore that range, then use SOVTEs with like sirens, for example. Oop, it cracked, stop, try again. And you will start to map it out. Just remember to keep soft, soft, soft and try traversing that gap. Once you master going from one register to another, you'll have a much more in-depth map of what your voice can do currently and you should avoid that a little bit more. So great question. It happens all the time. Really, really, really good. Um, any other questions, please, um, from around the side? So, Carl Sam, hello. What's your question? Okay, this is actually going back to when you had Violet Sammy on the stage. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed her voice so much and was jealous of it to the point where I was hoping to help with her dysphoria that you might ask the crowd here if they would like to have a voice as good as hers. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I think, yeah, let's ask everyone. I mean, would you be happy with Sammy's voice? I definitely would. <laughs> yeah, big show of hands. Absolutely. <laughs> You're sounding great, Sammy. You are killing it. Honestly, great question. I appreciate that. <laughs> really, really good. You're nailing it. This <laughs> second part of what I wanted to ask, you keep mentioning, is it S-O-V-T-E? But today you didn't explain absolutely. what that means. Yeah, of course. So SOVTE, it stands for semi occluded vocal tract exercise. What it is, is a series of different sounds that we can produce that will help to change the pressure within our system. By creating back pressure, by blocking the end of the vocal tract, the space between the voice box and the lips, by partially covering it, semi occluding it, we create back pressure and that back pressure can really help us to navigate our voice much better. 
It can help to create a safe environment where we are guided towards a voice that's more efficient. It will help to optimize the oscillation of the vocal folds to be where it should be and help you to balance the pressure of the forces from your breath below with the resistance above. So it's kind of like a um, like training with like weighted armor on or something. I don't know. <laughs> it kind of guides you into a place where you can use your voice freely without squeezing and pushing and straining. Um, the different sounds that are included there include mm as a mother, n mm, as in November, z as in buzz, uh, as in television, rolled R's, uh, trills, which is what you can see on the earlier, but also using um, a straw water to create a back pressure. All of these are really good exercise exercises. You can do this by sustaining a note of 10 seconds long. You can go in different intervals, like the fifth. You can go like, um, you can sing, you can do scales, or you can mimic people's speech. Right? You can start to really move through your range more dynamically with this stuff. And these different sounds will assist and inform you as to how best to produce these sounds without that back pressure and without that resistance. Um, yeah, I think that SOVTEs are like the backbone and DNA of so many different vocal exercises. Um, they're really, really good. So take a look at those. There's also more info on the first um, VOD online. But great question. Thank you so much. That is us just about at time today. I'm sorry that I didn't get to everyone's questions. I know I'm always like so pushed for time. Um, but I want to thank you all so, so, so much for being here on this Sunday with us all. We'll be back in two weeks' time with another vocal feminization workshop. Um, but until then, please do feel free to attend our classes um, on Thursdays and Fridays. We also have some community-led events happening within the voice training channel, which we love to see great opportunities for you to be able to practice your voice and if you're interested in androgenization or masculinization come along next sunday and we'll take a look at that too we do also have some plans in motion to kind of up the amount of offerings that we have with our voice stuff so watch this space but apart from that i've been rachel you've all been brilliant thank you so much have a lovely rest of your evening thanks so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. take care everyone bye bye bye, bye.